I love cheap thrills and I'm willing to bet so do you. And this is a cheap thrill. It's the 2014 Chevrolet Sonic with the 1.4 liter turbo. Very cool, a lot of fun, and cheap as hell. Cute? That's a little 1.4 liter four cylinder engine. It's turbocharged and it puts out 138 horsepower, but more importantly, 148 pound feet of torque. What's cool about it is they have another engine for this, the base model, which is larger. It's a 1.8 liter, but it's normally aspirated. It has the same output for horsepower, but only puts out 125 pound feet of torque. So this is a torquey little number, and it's hooked up to a six speed manual transmission. Combine that all together, and you have a really fun car that's capable of up to 33 miles per gallon combined. That's 29 city and up to 40 miles per gallon on the highway. So that's pretty damn awesome. Yes, it's actually a Borla exhaust and yes, you can get it as part of a package with this vehicle. Do I recommend it? It doesn't make it any faster. But from the inside, it sounds kind of cool when you're pushing it through the hills. And I, I, it kind of adds to the experience. On the other hand, it's a potato launcher and it belongs on a 19-year-old's Honda Civic. Some very interesting things about this vehicle you may not know. For one, yes, it is Korean in terms of design, but it's built right here in the United States. I love the quad headlights. I think they look awesome. It makes the car. It's so much better than the Chevy Aveo that it replaces, and they don't share any parts. They're completely foreign to each other. As I said before, cheap thrills. I don't know any other vehicle in this class that offers a turbocharged engine for as cheap as this car can be. Now, it starts around $14,000, but to get the turbocharged engine, it has to go up to about the mid $1,700 range. This particular model, with these not very attractive painted black wheels, which are 16 inch, is $20,450. Oh, that's a little bit pricey, but if you knock out a couple of these little goodies, including those, you can bring it down a bit. And for say $17,000, $18,000 with that awesome little engine, <laughs> it's actually quite a steal. Now, I love this car. I think I've already pointed that out, but there are problems, and one of which is the interior. Don't get me wrong, it's actually a comfortable interior. The seats are big enough for my big American ass, and there's enough room in the back for my kids. Adults can even fit back here, three of them, for a very limited amount of time, which you will see in another video that has this car featured in it. But this particular interior has the issues of super hard, super cheap plastics. They look good, but when you actually touch them, you realize they didn't spend a lot of money on them. In fact, one of its main competitors, the Ford Fiesta, has a much nicer interior when it comes to actual quality. Touch this and then you touch the interior of the Ford Fiesta, you're definitely going to feel how cheap it is. Good news though, there's some interesting tech items I want to show you inside. All right, folks, here we go. I'm going to leave the traction control on. Shut the air conditioner off. You gotta rev this thing a little bit to really get the power. Not the best start. Come on. Zero to 60, 9.74. Not what I was hoping for. I know this thing does about eight and a half at sea level, so I was hoping to do nine and a half. It could be worse. Wow, I decided to try one more time. 9.13. I really like this. This is based on a motorcycle design. A lot of you recognize it, and it is a bit of a gimmick. I admit it is too. But it works really well. 
all of the information you need is right there in the display screen. And I love the big tack. That's awesome. If you watched our old video nearly two years or almost over two years ago, we reviewed basically the same car, but with the slower engine. And I sat in the back of here and yes, I do fit. But what I wanted to show you was that for basic necessities, it works quite well. And down here is a nice little cargo area and it's surprisingly large. I was able to get two cases of sodas in there with room to spare. So it's got some utility going for it. On the TFL car scale of buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it, I'm going to give this one with the 1.4 liter turbo a buy it and with the 1.8, which I've driven recently and actually several times, a rent it. That's right, I'm going from one side almost all the way to the other because there's just not enough torque in that 1.8 liter to substantiate it as anything other than a very, very slow car up here. But this, it's fun. It's practical, it gets good mileage. I think it's good looking and, well, except for the wheels. And dude, it makes you happy. Any car that can make you happy is worth a buy it. For the fast lane car, this is Nathan Adlin. I'll see you next time. Welcome to beautiful and sunny Colorado, and we are on the top of the world, right below the Eisenhower Tunnel, and this is the Ike Gauntlet, and today we are gonna mash up, or match up, two cars. Over here we have Nathan. This is the 2014 Chevy Sonic, and it's turbocharged. And over here we have Emmy with... The 2014 Ford Fiesta Party! So the Ike Gauntlet is taking both these cars from Silverthorne, Colorado, which is at about 10,000 feet of elevation, all the way to the top of the Eisenhower Tunnel at 12,000 feet, eight miles at full throttle to see which one gets up to the top fastest. And to make it interesting, we're gonna put one, two, and three. This is for me, yeah? And four Yay, people. Andre's gonna be with us. <laughs> in these cars, and we're gonna see which one gets the stamp of approval. Coming up next. On the Fastlane car. Brum, brum, brum.